Hello everyone. Welcome to Nesso Academy. In the previous lecture we understood what are keywords, what are identifiers and how they are different from each other. Now we are in this lecture and the name of the lecture is Identifiers Best Practices. In this lecture we will understand some of the best practices we need to follow for identifiers. So without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics. There is only one topic of this lecture and the name of the topic is Identifiers Best Practices. Now let's quickly move forward and let's understand what are some of the best practices we need to follow for identifiers. The first best practice is follow consistent naming convention. Following same convention improves maintainability of the code. Understand that if we follow same convention for a specific entity in our code, then it will improve the maintainability of our code. By maintainability, I mean that if you or someone will see your code in future, then he or she will be able to identify different parts of the code very easily. Because in your code, you have followed consistent naming convention. So following consistent naming convention is quite important. Now let's see what are the different entities we have in C++ and what conventions we can follow for those entities. Here in this table, I'm going to list down all the entities. Apart from this, I will also provide the conventions for those entities and examples. Let's start with the first entity, variables. For variables, we can follow the camel case convention. By camel case, I mean the letters of the first word are all lowercase letters, but the first letter of the second word must be capitalized. For example, here we have the name user age, which is formed from two words user and age. User is all lowercase letters, but if you observe age, the first letter of age is capitalized. If we have a single word variable name, then all letters of that word must be lowercase letters. So these are some examples of camel case convention that we can follow for variables. I hope it is clear to you. Now let's move to the second entity, functions. Functions can also follow camel case convention. This means the first letter of the second word must be capitalized and the rest of the letters must be all lowercase. For example, here we have the function name calculate total. We can observe this name is formed from two words calculate and total. The first letter of the second word is capitalized which is T and the rest of the letters are all lowercase letters. Now here comes the third entity constants. For constants we can follow uppercase with underscores convention. This is how it looks like. Here we have the constant name max speed. We have all uppercase letters here and these two words are separated by underscore. This allows us to differentiate between these two words. It will give us the separation between these words. I hope it is clear to you. So this is uppercase with underscores. Now let's move to the fourth entity, classes. Classes follow the Pascal case convention where the first letter of each word is capitalized. For example, here we have this name bank account, which is formed from two words, bank and account. The first letter of these two words are capitalized. This is what we can observe. Now here comes the fifth entity, namespaces. For namespaces, we can follow snake case convention. In snake case convention, we have all lowercase letters, and words are separated by underscores. For example, here we have this namespace, my utils. All these letters are lowercase letters and these words are separated by underscore. So these are some of the entities in C++ and here are the conventions that we can follow for these entities. These are not all the entities we have in C++. Please take a note of it. Apart from this, you may also not know all these entities or maybe some of these entities. 
we will learn about these entities as we encounter them in this course but for now knowing the conventions that these entities will follow is important for us so with this we are done with the first best practice that is follow consistent naming convention now let's move to the second best practice the second best practice is avoid keywords as identifiers never use keywords as identifiers for entities we must not use keywords as identifiers i have mentioned this point in the last lecture as well that we must not use keywords as identifiers because keywords are reserved words they have special meaning in c++ they must not be used for identifiers let's see some examples to clarify this here we have this variable name double the name of this variable is double and the type of this variable is int this means this variable can hold an integer value but the problem is that the variable name is not valid because double is a keyword this is the keyword which is used to represent a floating point value or a fraction we cannot use this as the variable name so this is not the valid variable name on the other hand if we define variable name as age then this is valid because age is not the keyword in c++ i hope it is clear to you so we are done with this second best practice as well now let's move to the third best practice the third best practice is avoid using underscores at the start names starting with underscore followed by a capital letter or double underscores are reserved for implementation let's first understand the meaning of implementation by implementation i mean operating system and compiler these are responsible for implementing our code that's why we call them implementation names starting with underscore followed by a capital letter and names starting with double underscores are reserved for implementation so we must not use them for identifiers let's see some examples to clarify this here we have this example class and the name of this class is underscore my class here you can observe that this name is beginning with underscore and then we have the capital letter m as mentioned here names starting with underscore followed by a capital letter are reserved for implementation so it is possible that this name is reserved for implementation to avoid any clashes with the implementation we must not use this class name so this is not considered as a good practice although we can define this type of class the name of this class is perfectly valid here we have capital letter in the beginning this means we are following the pascal case convention we have two words here my and class and the first letter of each word is capitalized this means we are following the pascal case convention which is valid for classes i hope it is clear what is the meaning of avoid using underscores at the start with this we are done with the third best practice as well now let's move to the fourth best practice the fourth best practice is use meaningful names use descriptive names that reflect the purpose or usage of a specific entity we must always try to use descriptive names for our entities so as to reflect the purpose or usage of them for example here i have defined this variable a and the type of this variable is int this means it can hold an integer but the name of the variable is not nice because this variable name is not indicating the purpose of this variable or usage of this variable so this variable name is not nice but what about this variable name this variable name is good because this variable name clearly indicates the purpose of this variable we know the name of the variable is amount this means we can store some amount in it so clearly the purpose is defined through this name so we can say this name is correct 
So with this, we are done with the fourth best practice as well. Now let's move to the fifth best practice. This is the fifth best practice. Avoid very long names. Use descriptive names that are not too long. We must use descriptive names for our variables, but it is not advisable to use long descriptive names. For example, here I have defined this variable and the name of this variable is too long. Employee salary in dollars for tax calculation. This is not needed. If we define variable name like this, employee salary, then this is sufficient. So we can follow this variable name. I hope this point is also clear to you. We must avoid very long names because although they are descriptive, but it is not advisable to use long descriptive names. So with this, we are done with five best practices for identifiers. And this means we are done with this topic as well. And we are done with this lecture. Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.